Good morning, everyone. It's your friend Rick. It is Saturday, November the 4th, 2017. If you need to contact me because you would like to make a donation to receive my paperwork, it is email is rick, R I C K, 0327 at me.com. I have a request. Please, if you have a history of uh, mental issues, like you're bipolar, or uh, you know, people keep asking you to go see a doctor, or they keep asking you if you're taking medication, please do not email me. All right, I'm I'm trying to uh, avoid people like that. All right, I, I work with people like that for <laughs> for a few years when I used to work in New York City. I used to go to Bellevue Hospital uh, several times a week dealing with mentally ill people, and I know mentally ill people, okay? I am even got it down to I could sense Ill, mentally ill people by their emails. So get help first, please. If you got issues, please get help. But uh, if you're not getting help, please do not email me. All right? I'm not joking either. Okay, because I've had some issues with some people, and uh, you know it's not easy. It's it's you know it's usually it usually ends the wrong way. Okay, it usually ends with me giving me giving them their money back just to leave me alone. <clears throat> all right, um, all right. So, all right, I want you guys to repeat these words. I have the right. To remain silent. All right, let's do it again. I have the right to remain silent. Okay. Then we throw this in there. Under the Fifth Amendment, I do not have to give testimony against myself or submit evidence against that may incriminate me. So, okay, I do not have to give testimony that may incriminate me or provide evidence that may incriminate me. If you think about it, your testimony is evidence, okay? So we don't want you to do that, all right? You have absolutely nothing to gain by speaking in court, answering their questions. Now, if you're going to speak, it should be you asking them questions, so, here's a, a simple rule, really. Don't speak when they ask you questions. Speak when you're asking questions, all right? Okay, so when would we be doing something like this? Well, you want to remain silent if you're going to court the first time or they're trying to establish paternity, okay? Now... One way they establish paternity is by you signing, you know, papers acknowledging paternity. All right. Another is a paternity test. Here's the other way they get you. They get you by asking questions. Okay. There's several of you have been, you know, that say you didn't, you know, you didn't go along with the paternity. You know, you didn't sign the, the birth certificate. What they'll do is they'll issue the support order based on, uh, you know, probable cause that you're the father. Well, why do they believe that you're the father? Well, you know, you, you spent time with the child. You were at the hospital. Okay? People who are not the father do not come to the hospital for the birth. Okay? People who are not the father do not spend time with the child. Okay, so that's what they're doing, all right? Um, a new subscriber, um, he just went through this, and he actually had the, the video of it, and I'm, I'm, you know, listening to the video, and the, uh, the fake judge was asking that question, like, you know, was he there at the hospital? Okay, did he sign it? See, she was slick. So she was working her way in there 
and, and what he did also while he was speaking, it's not his fault, all right? This is, you know, this is, nobody knows this stuff going in, okay? So it's not his fault. He was just, you know, he went in and on. And see, what they do, these people, they're, they're so wicked and ruthless. They use our honesty against us. Like myself, I mean, I, I I never forget. Like I wasn't, my wife was worried, but I I I'm like, oh, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, they're gonna see, uh, about, and I went there with a stack. Of, I'm telling you, I had a stack of checks like that. No bullshit, because I was paying by check since 1999. They brought me into court 11 years later, and they, all they wanted from me was to force me to pay through their system so they could collect all that money from me. I mean, from this, from the government, you know, in the Title Four D. So, you know, I wasn't afraid of going to court. I, you know, I did everything right. I had receipts. I did everything, and I still got fucked. Okay, so uh, that's why I'm saying you have nothing to gain by speaking. None, nothing to gain at all. Uh, when when they're trying to establish paternity on you. Okay, now. Let me tell you when you should speak. Remember I said, don't speak when they're asking you questions. Speak when you're asking questions. All right, what kind of questions are we going to ask? Okay. Where is the evidence that the petitioner has suffered uh, some type of injury? See, what they're doing is they claim, well, you got to support your child. Yeah, you're right, but how do you know I'm not supporting my child? Okay? So, she, so you should never, ever tell them how much you're paying. Because they got their, their, their friggin', uh, uh, you know, um, like the standards, what you should be paying. Okay? You know, the 17%, you know, uh, 25%, 28%, I think it is. Uh, so you don't you don't tell them these things. You should just your your attitude is I'm paying. I am supporting my child. How much you paying? I am supporting my child. It's not the court's business. Where is the petitioner's proof that I'm not supporting my child? Well, she's receiving public assistance. That's her business. It has nothing to do with me. Okay. She does, you know, it's not, because it's not income. If you think about it, she's not getting a, a, a 1099. She doesn't get a, uh, she doesn't file taxes based on how much money you give her. So that has nothing to do with welfare. All right, so as far as you're concerned, you're supporting that child. Okay, so that's, that's so you should be just asking, where is the proof that I am not supporting my child? But remember, you are the respondent. And re the, the burden of proof is on the petitioner. The petitioner bears the proof of proving she or he has suffered an injury. In fact, that's every case. Not just child support. So in order for you to be prosecuted, there has to be proof that you broke some law. Okay, so if they're claiming that there's a child support law, that you're not supporting your child, they have to prove it. And you, because you are the respondent, you don't have to bring the information in there. Remember what I said, you know, just before, they use your honesty against you. So what do they do when you go to, they send these, these, this paperwork to you telling you to fill out all your financial, it's a financial disclosure affidavit. Don't fill that out, ever. Remember, remain silent. You don't have to give evidence. Well, that's evidence. Using that, that the, the ink from that pen to that paper is evidence against you. You are burying yourself. Burying yourself. Because we're already dealing with dishonest people. Okay? There's nobody that there's nobody in that room as your friend. And let's just say 
you run into somebody that actually seems to be friendly, that person is not your friend. Okay? Please understand that. Okay, so like uh, people that I, you know, I, I, I help out, I tell them don't be sworn in. Okay? Because you only have to be sworn in if you're going to be giving testimony. You don't, so you don't have to be sworn in. You are there. I am here because I want to see the evidence presented against me. Without evidence, there's no case. Okay? Just remember that, please. No evidence, no case. All right. Um, oh, um, uh, guys, it's in my instructions for my paperwork, but please... I'm going to do it again. This is probably like my 25th time covering this subject, but you are the respondent. So just because you are filing paperwork does not make you a petitioner. It doesn't change. You are responding. Respondent. The petitioner files a petition okay I'm going to tell you the only two times where you're going to be the petitioner the writ of habeas corpus right and the uh, writ of mandamus okay and of course if you're going to you know file a petition to sue somebody or or you, you know you can file a counterclaim right if you want to file a counterclaim uh, you know the baby mother or your ex-wife or whatever or your ex-husband um, is um, filing false claims against you. You could do that too. All right. Um, <clears throat> what I've been working on, I, 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 so I'm thinking out of the box, and you know when uh, you know um, they have these uh, petition campaigns, like move on. Uh, you know, these, the social media, like you get as many people to sign paperwork as possible. If you are married, right, and you're caught in this game where they're seizing your money by income withholding order, the court issued a support order against you, it would benefit you to get your your spouse or your girlfriend to file, to uh, write, uh, make an affidavit, uh, uh, well, actually, yeah, uh, uh a statement, okay, and in the statement, statement of facts, um, is you observed an uh, an order that is without a judicial signature, and this order has caused you know uh, pain and suffering. My husband or my girlfriend is uh, depressed. Uh, it's affected our, our, you know, our relationship. We we are financially uh, we we've, we've been uh, injured finan economically. Uh, where we once had money, we don't have money anymore. We can't buy this. We can't buy that. And you're and it, and you're going to submit this with your paperwork because it's going to support the uh, your claim. That you didn't do any, you know, uh, that you're being injured uh, by a false claim. Okay? So, it's like a witness statement. And you can submit it with your paperwork. But what it is, is you're getting another set of eyes on the fake court order. Okay? The the court on non judice You know what I'm saying? So, shite. I'm sorry, guys. Traffic jam in New York. Thank you, ma'am. New York is horrible. We uh, we got traffic every day of the week. <laughs> Doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Um, but it is is you can't it can't hurt having uh, somebody else to paper notarize sworn um, that 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 there's a a, a forgery out there causing pain and suffering to you okay 
So that way, that's another person that's seen that document, that's seen that it's not signed by a clerk, or it's signed by a deputy clerk, that it's signed by uh, a non-judicial person. Okay, so where we just have you, now we have two. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, okay? Um, and it can only help us. That way down the road, actually you could come to, you know, down the road, you could, you could submit that with the writ of habeas corpus or the writ of mandamus. That the, uh, you know, that this uh, forgery, this fake court order is causing not only you pain and suffering, it's causing your family pain and suffering. Okay? It's just an idea that's been kicking around in my head, you know? Um, my paperwork is having an effect, okay? Um, I told you guys the story about um, about Ozzy um, being last on the docket, which is a common ploy by these people, all right? Um, they don't want... They don't want anybody else catching wind of this. Uh, on YouTube, there's plenty of videos of other people who are like fighting, um, let's say, a, a, a traffic ticket, and uh, you know they're gonna fight it, and they make them wait all day because they don't want anybody in there watching and learning. All right, I told you about Joe um, uh, and ethical anarchism channel. Joey, I always F up your thing. It's like a, a mental block. But he used to be Cop Watch Hawaii. Um, and uh, he, they they didn't, they, they haven't uh, arrested him for contempt. Because they know what he did was he went in the back uh, in the holding pen and he was being loud and he was educating everybody. They don't want that. Remember in, in the last video I talked about uh, you know if you don't want to do jury duty, you just say you're a sovereign citizen, all right? And somebody in the comment section went off. Listen, I don't tell anybody to be a sovereign citizen. I don't believe in that stuff, okay? All right? I think we're all humans. That's what I go by, all right? So all I'm saying is to use that as a weapon to stay out of jury duty, okay? They don't want anybody that knows the law to be in that room educating anybody, okay? They don't want that to happen, okay? You're nothing but a troublemaker to them. And that's what we are right now. My paperwork is causing havoc to these people. And we're only getting better, all right? So, uh, you know, I have people sending in the special appearance, uh, demanding to see the evidence. And then when they don't, you're going to file a dismissal for default, okay? And you could even file a, a default or a dismissal. Let's say you've been to court a couple of times already. You could file a dismissal and say that you were you were, uh, you were in court on such and such a date, and you know the other day two times, and say uh, and both times. When I was present, I did not witness any evidence being introduced against me proving that I was not supporting my child that or that I was causing injury to the petitioner by not supporting my, my, my offspring, all right, to that effect, because you're getting it on the record in your paperwork that there's no evidence being introduced against you. So if there's no evidence on the docket, how can they convict you or prosecute you? You understand? Without evidence, they don't have a, they don't have a case. All right. So all right. So uh, I'm gonna shut the video down now. Uh, again, my paperwork. Uh, if you need to get it for a donation, the email is Rick R I C K zero three two seven at me dot com. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your day.